He is the one and only Robert Whitaker. Hello, Robert. How are you? Good, thank you, mate. Thanks for having me once again. And uh, I do have to apologize publicly. We had a bit of a miscommunique um, a couple of weeks ago where I had the horrible feeling of looking at my phone and you were standing by. Uh, that's never happened before. No one knows what I'm speaking of, but publicly I do have to apologize for the uh, confusion. <laughs> mate, it, it happens. It was no stress at all. Oh, I appreciate that. By the way, what's going on at home? Is this a crazy time right now with the children? <laughs> Yeah, it is. So I apologize in advance if you hear some yelling and screaming in the background. Trying to get four kids ready for school is something else. Yes. I'll tell you what. I, uh, I do not envy. I have three, and I know how crazy it is. Does your wife hate me when uh, you get booked for these early morning interviews? Oh, no. She just kind of looks at me wild eye. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, no worries. All good. <laughs> yeah, you will pay the price later. So I apologize, Mrs. Whitaker. Yeah. By the way, what happened uh, What happened to your right eye? Underneath the right eye. Is that from Which the one? fight? This one? Yeah, well, I've, so I've been back at training now. This is my second week back at training. And I'm kind of hoping it opens up because I, I just got this glued. So I had a tiny cut there and they glued it. It is just taking forever to seal up. And I feel like like stitches heal so much faster and, and, and smoother, but it's, yeah, it's just taking forever. Wow. It looks like you just fought on Saturday. Like it looks so fresh. Yeah, I, I know. I, like, like I said, I am, I am training on it. So I've been knocking it and, and bumping it and whatnot, but yeah, it's just taking forever to, to disappear. It, to be fair, I do have porcelain white skin. So, right. <laughs> so, yes. mm. So what did you do after the fight? So you said you just came back. This is your second week of training. Um, yeah. Do, do you just shut down? Do you, do you not do anything in the couple of weeks after the fight? Generally, uh, yeah, I'd like to have some time off, and I, I usually uh, take the family away, you know, kind of make them amends for being a little grumpy, not the, the entirety of the camp. But this time I was sick as a dog. Like, oh, that's so right. I, woke up fight, I woke up fight day with a sore throat. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to suck. doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll worry about being sick tomorrow. Got through the fight. Next day, flew home. By the time I landed in Sydney, I was done. This is – I kid you not. And I've had COVID and chicken pox as an adult and everything else. This was the sickest I have ever been. It was like um, the ultimate flu. It was terrible. Wow. On the plane, too, for that long trip. Yeah, no, it was terrible on the plane because – you know how when you're on a plane and you try to get some shut eye and then you wake up and you feel terrible, yeah, like just just normally. This was a hundred times worse, a hundred times worse. <laughs> wow! And how, so, how did you feel um, in the locker room before the fight? Like, was it kicking in then? Um, <clears throat> well, you know, whenever you get sick, it's like day one's always manageable. You're like, oh, I'm starting to get sick, but you can, you're still still good enough to do whatever it is you have to do. That's where I was at. Like I was just had this funny looking cough, and uh, I was just warming up a usual bit of a sore throat. But it was it was fine. It wasn't it wasn't until a few days later that I was completely written off. Which is you know you can look at it like lucky or or not, right? Right. If if that if if the if the sickness hit on the Saturday morning, whatever you ended up feeling, would it have been bad enough to remove you from the fight? Like meaning. Did you just dodge that bullet by a couple of days? It would have been bad. Like I would have felt terrible, but I would have fought. There's zero chance I'm going through a whole camp. Right. <laughs> going through a whole camp, cutting weight and not fighting. <laughs> okay. Um, that is that is still crazy that you were under the weather considering how good you fought, how good you looked in there. How do you feel about the fight now? A month later, um, it was a big one for you, a great win. How do you feel about the body of work? Um, I'm, I'm, so there are certain things I set out to do in the camp that lead up, and I remember speaking to you about it. It was about like being that, that, that primalness in the fighting, bringing back that doggedness in the fight, and uh, really taking a grip of my mentality you know, and, and um, a mental space in fighting, in the competition, in, 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 in the combat. And I feel like I ticked that box 100%. I've, I've never had such control over my, my headspace and my mental fortitude in there, my resolve in the fight to make it a dogfight, to, to, to go the distance, to, to get hit, to throw hits. You know, just, just I really felt like I had control over that. 
But I do feel like I could have fought better. I feel like I could have finessed it a little bit more. I, I feel this is just how I, I feel now. You know, everything's perfect in hindsight, right? But I feel like because I had that, I was working on that doggedness, that resolve so much that it kind of made me bite down on the mouth guard a little bit more than I needed to, like, you know, like really mm. <laughs> dig in a little bit. But I think at that time, that was the best that I could have fought then. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got to be happy with it, right? So um, obviously you saying that about the mental fortitude and being locked in is one thing. How do you actually accomplish that? What did you do to actually be that locked in? Uh, well, well, it started in it started in the in, in on the mats. It started in the gym. So I remembered how I felt for Drickus, and I, I never wanted like my body let me down. I, I felt like my spirit let me down in some respects. Um, so I, I took that feeling back to the mats, and I, I remember speaking to you about it. I was just mentioning that like every time I had a match, or I had uh, you know I was wrestling, or I was grappling, or I was sparring. I wanted to win. And it was about bringing that competitive side mm. back into it. Like, and naturally I want to win, but how much do you want to win? And there wasn't like, I just fought for every single position. I just fought even days where I was absolutely flat as, and I was on in the gym on the mats and I'm getting like shark tanked, you know, end of the end of the round where it's easy to just give a round, because you're tired and you've done five shark tanks off the back cuff, like always constantly fighting and just reminding myself about that. And uh, yeah, I guess I think that's where it starts. And then just having that mentality throughout the fight camp, you probably saw me in, in fight week and lead up to it. It was like, I was purely there for business and I, I had drilled that into myself. So when I was, I was doing the different things, I was making sure that I was dressed for work. Like I, I know why I'm here and I'm not getting confused about that. Ah, so like completely locked in, not into the the showbiz aspect, business trip, don't lose sight of it all. Yeah, exactly. Don't get distracted. You know, don't, no no space, no room for anything else sort of thing. Um, Paolo, it it likes that sort of, you know, showman side of things. Uh, Did you feel like Mm. he was trying to get you off of that or? Um, I, I didn't really feel it, but I feel like... A lot of guys that I fight try to get me off track when it comes to that sort of thing. And uh, I, I've never really fallen into that stuff. That He was just acting like he normally acts, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which mm. uh, wasn't anything too bad. There was some other stuff going on, but uh, wasn't that too you know too bad. When you say that like your soul let you down before the Drickus fight, what do you mean by that? Uh, it's just – so like the lead up, the preparation for that fight wasn't great. And I had the training was completely different. I think I did I didn't the majority of the camp on like an assault bike just because of um, injuries and obstacles and whatnot. So I was I was burnt out. I was tired, like drained before we even mm. got to that point. And uh, mate, like when I got in there, I, I I just I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be there. Like I I, I don't know what it was. I don't know what I didn't do or why you know i ended up in that position but my 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 spirit was was caught, like my flame if you would was dim <laughs> that's whereas that's wild yeah yeah it, whereas the, the last fight i could i really felt like i brought that back it's interesting to hear you say this because uh, just earlier in the day uh, we spoke to francis Ngannou, and he kind of talked about like just feeling sluggish feeling sleepy during his fight and not exactly the same words that you're using but i could see regular people being like how's that possible you're about to get into a fight how could you not yeah. feel it how could you feel like your light is dim but you're essentially saying the same thing he said so like you could understand this right this is not just an ex- a fighter making an excuse after a loss this is something that you guys have to deal with and overcome and it could it can hit you at the worst possible time oh definitely definitely and and all fights are like that. It's like who shows up on the night. And and that's why I've never mentioned anything else against Drickus because he turned up to fight. He was hungry. And that's why he's champ today. Like, can, like yeah, props to him for that. But, you know, I'm, I know what I need to work on. You know, and I did that. I know what I could have done better. And, you know, it led me to last fight, the way I went into it, the headspace that I had 
in there and I felt great. I felt in control and, mate, I'm, I'm hungry again. You feel that. That is great to hear. Um, what did you make of Paulo, by the way? Big, strong guy. Hadn't fought in, you know, quite some time. <laughs> I thought he looked good considering the layoff. What did you make of him? Mate, so in the lead up, in the, the prep, everyone asks the same questions. Like, he hasn't had fought for a long time, hasn't done this, yada, yada, yada. And I replied the same as always. I'm in the gym, like, multiple times a day training for the absolute best version of Paulo Costa. And unfortunately, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> I got the absolute best version of it. And, like, good on him, uh, you know. But, it like, he – this is – I think that was his best performance. <laughs> I think for sure, like, that was his best performance and he gave it to me for, for bloody hell, right? But also, like – yeah, he was just he, – he come in really, really good. I, th I think that version of Costa beats a lot of guys, a lot of guys um, at, at, at the high level. He was much faster than we anticipated. Um, I knew from watching his fight with like Romero, like he has that, that doggedness in him like to not go away. Like he has a head on him. He, he's going to – like he can fight wars, you know what I mean? And um, – the only thing that I could I could point out was that like he doesn't look as good when someone's taking the fight to him. Not mm. that he goes away, not that he looks for an exit. It's just that he doesn't look as good and he he can get pushed around a little bit and usually he and he can get outstruck that way. So that was my thing going there. I was going to take you know I was going to fight fire with fire sort of thing and just really make it a fire fight. Um, were you worried? On on the day, I, I know you said you were dealing with the uh, the sickness coming, but even in the locker room, like, were you worried that that feeling that you felt before the DDP fight would hit you again, that the light wouldn't be as as strong, or was the week so good, the prep so good that that wasn't really a fear in your mind? Oh no, it was definitely a fear. Oh, definitely it was. A fear. And uh, oh yeah, because anyone that's lost a fight will take those doubts into the next, and uh, unless. Unless you're the you're the type of person that can completely switch out, like control your 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 mental space where you can just um, block out certain thoughts, then it's gonna be there in some respect. And I I I was terrified of that man because it was something that I could I I couldn't control in that fight with DDP, and and I I you can't, I couldn't really put a finger on why it happened. And yes, after the fight, we were like looking at all the reasons. I was like, maybe it was this, maybe it was that. We'll change this, we'll change that. But you don't really know why. You know, it could have been how I ate. It could have been the cut. It could have been anything, you know. So I was, I was, I was, I was scared and nervous of going into the fight with Costa, of, um, of having a repeat, of being let down. You know, you know what? It, like to the point where I was even thinking that maybe I was just nervous. Which is crazy because I've I've been in there so many times right. for so long. Like, but yeah, it's just like you're just trying to find the answer. So, yeah, yeah, I was I was definitely um nervous about a repeat. But the nerves are normal, right? I mean, like even the greatest ever say that up until their last fight they were still nervous, right? Like the nerves never really go away. I would imagine, even if you're on a winning streak. Am I wrong? Oh, definitely. No, definitely, definitely. The nerves never go away, but I was just trying to find a reason for how I felt mm -hmm. and um, in that DDP fight, and I just felt tired. I felt tired. I felt lethargic. Like, yeah, I just didn't have it in me to, to you know, to fight. Um, I'm not sure if you saw it, but uh, last week on the show, we had uh, Dustin Poirier on, and he was quite open about what he dealt with in the aftermath of his knockout loss to Justin Gaethje, um, the mm -hmm. mental side of things. And you've been open about that as well. Um, did you happen to see any of his comments? And and could you relate to how how hard it could be when you lose a fight like that? No, I I, I didn't I didn't hear any of the comments. But um, could you summarize it for me? Yeah, well, I mean, you... basically, what he said was uh, it was extremely dark uh, to the point where um, you know he was worried about his well being. He was worried about whether or not he would ever fight again. Uh, he had to speak to a therapist. Um, it was the lowest that he has ever felt. And, you know, he's had ups and downs, but he's never experienced like a low like that before to the point where he wasn't sure if he would continue. And um, mm. 
and it sounded like he wasn't just talking about fighting, like really, really, really dark stuff. Um, yeah. And this is a side of fighting that people don't really realize, right? Like we, we watch the fights, we move on to next week, but when you lose on such a grand stage like that, I can't imagine it, anything being tougher than that as an athlete. So I was just wondering, as someone who's been in touch with these feelings and open about these feelings, I was wondering if you um, related at all to that sentiment. Uh, there's a, I definitely, I definitely relate to, to that because there's a couple, I think there's a couple, there's a couple of things you can look at there, right? The first one is that the, the higher the rise, the lower the fall, right? Mm-hmm. So like the more you do work, the, yeah, the more you do well, and the more you you're winning, and you're you know, you're, you're Dustin Poirier, right? He's a household name. He's he's an absolute animal, a savage in the game. Like to lose makes it that much harder. Now the MMA community don't make it easy. Those guys are harder than any fight. Like their criticism and comments are worse than any punch, any kick they can have. And don't get me wrong, I love I love. The MMA community, they're, they're the, the, the lift beneath my wings. <laughs> but, but, mate, they can turn on you in the drop of a dime, drop of a dime. Do you know how many times after I lost to DDP, just reading the comment over and over, Rob Whitaker's a wash. Whitaker's done now. Whitaker's on a, like, that's it. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. and I'm sure he was receiving the same things, the, the, the same things. And, like, this is, for me, you're like, oh, Let's be let's be fair. Let's let's just look at facts. I, I'm smashing most guys, and Poirier is hands down smashing most guys, right? But I, I, I guarantee you, he was re- receiving the same things. But like I said, when you go into these fights, having a loss like that, it just it shakes your foundation of who you are. Because, and it's not just an athlete. I think the community don't sometimes don't get it. Is that like? Who like us in the octagon as athletes is the same person that buys milk, you know, for their kids. It's the same guy that goes and get coffee with their friends. The same guy that wakes up to their kids. We're the same person. Yeah, we can switch on and off to a degree in in the octagon when it's time to work, just like anybody else does when they go to work. But with it, we we're the same person. So having a loss like that, and in hearing the aftermath of the fans and and everything else that comes with it, it affects you outside the octagon. It affects you in your day-to-day life. So it's just, it's hard. Like it, it does take time. And it's, it's like really good to hear that he, he went to a therapist. He did, like he, he looked after himself. And you can see that in that last fight, he, he kind of pushed out the voices and just said, no, this is what I do, right? And uh, yeah, it, it can be hard. And you know what, on that, on that, it makes me think that like maybe Volk on the same night came back too soon. Cause if someone's like Poirier is saying like you went to a dark space, if I'm saying like I went to a dark space after a loss like that, you know, I, I can't imagine that he didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. Uh, well, Dustin's fight was in late July. Yours was in early July. Volk had a win in July, but then had the knockout loss in October. And then of course what happened, I don't think look to Poirier may have beaten him, regardless, but I have a hard mm. time ignoring what happened in October and not thinking there's some sort of relation between the way in which that fight and how quickly it ended on the same card as yours. Do you agree with yeah. that? Do you feel like there's a correlation? I, and exa- exactly like you, I want to I pre, pre, preface with, he, Tavoria may have just beat him on sure. his best night, right? Sure, sure. Before we start getting slammed in the comments. Yes, yes. But, but I, I, I mentioned earlier, you don't, Take a loss, especially a stoppage loss, and it not play on your mind, not be in the back of your headspace. It's it's in your headspace the whole time you're training. This is just from my experience. It's in it's in your head the whole time you're doing your camp, and it's in your head the night of the fight. Like it just is. If 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 Francis Ngannou goes back to MMA, do you think that same thing will play on his mind, or do you think he can separate it because it's a different sport? I think, oh, mate, it, it, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. I think, I definitely think that Francis Ngannou is, he is a specimen, okay? Like, he he has a head on him. He hits like a, he's just built for it. He's, he, he's built for the game, right? 
but him going back to MMA, I don't, I don't know that. Like, I, it's hard because you can you can look at a lot of things. You can say, so everyone understands Nagani's story that he was struggling, didn't have any money. Now he's got a ton of cash. And then you look at that and you think like maybe that hunger, that that lack mm. of funds, of resources, maybe that's what gave him that element mm. of recklessness and hunger and drive to do what he did the way he did it. And then you can also say that maybe maybe because of the lights and because of the size of the fights he's been having now and because he's jumping divisions and jumping organizations and yada, yada, maybe he's getting distracted. Maybe there's too much noise. Maybe mm. there's too much clutter, you know. But I don't want to sit here just trying to poke holes in anything which way. He, he fought one of the best boxers in the world. I don't know if – is he definitely going back to MMA now? Is that – He's still up in the air. He's still undecided. <laughs> he hasn't made that decision. Yeah, I don't I don't love the way he's kind of uh up in the air, I guess. I think I think the fight game did, requires a certain amount of dedication, it requires a certain amount of grit, of resolve to to do well in. I think um that's also where we saw Conor McGregor get a little mm. Um, lost a little, little bit of his edge. You know, he started making money. He started getting distracted. And uh, there were things bigger than fighting. I think if you're going to fight, nothing comes before that. And uh, and it, it's hard to say because once you have family and you start making money and yada, 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 it's like things start, start taking precedence. But, yeah, I think I think it requires – because this is the, the truth of the matter is you're going to fight a guy that ha- – is from like let's say a young kid from Brazil that has absolutely nothing and is willing to die there. Mm-hmm. And unless you're willing to meet that level of resolve, yeah, you're like you, you're all, your back's already against the wall, you know. Um, I was curious. Uh, I don't think you train together, but uh, I know that you are represented by the same management team. Uh, Steve Urseg is fighting for a UFC mm. title on May fourth. It came out on Friday. And I would say a lot of people were surprised by the news because no one really saw it coming. Um, why yeah. should why should people be excited? Do you have any sort of relationship with Steve? Have you ever trained with him? Um, do you have any connection to him whatsoever? And why, sh- if so, why should people be excited about this? No, I've spoken to him a few times. I've never trained with him because okay. he's, uh, he's on the Perth, other side right? of the country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's on the other side of the country. It's, just, it's not a short distance, right? Um, but... Congratulations to him for one because he's been doing the right things. He he jumped into the game, and I think his first fight in the UFC was top ten opponent, and then he he fought again and again. And his last fight, obviously, he won in, in impressive fashion. That's that's the thing about the UFC, which makes it so exciting and fun, is that it is just it is just a game that is rife with opportunity. So much like. Sean Strickland, when he fought Adesanya and became the champion, it's just about where you are at the time. It's like what you're doing. It's about being in the right place at the right time. And I think Steve has done that. And he could very well, like his skill set, I think, like he could very well be the next champ. That is wild, uh, considering where he was just a year ago. Um, okay, so for you, yeah. when, when will we see you back in there? When would you like to return? Uh, there is rumors of a uh, UFC card coming to Australia in, in August. And I think just because of how busy the division is and how everyone's tied up, I would love to to, to fight on home soil yeah. in August. Okay. Yeah. And who's the uh, who's the ideal opponent for that card? Right. Anyone that gets me to the title. I wanna I wanna I wanna win my next fight and be and I want the next fight to be a contender fight. I want the next fight to be the the fight that puts me against the gold, so I can so I can get that back. It sounds like they want to do Izzy versus DDP because that was what was floated for three hundred. They may go in a different direction, but I feel Izzy DDP you versus Sean Strickland. I feel like those are the the two fights with the four fighters. Yep. If that like I I like that. I haven't fought Sean before, and I know. Beating Sean's put puts me in that conversation. So, yeah, it's 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 all systems go. How would you feel about Izzy getting another crack at uh, at the belt? First time at DDP, but another crack at the belt. 
Ah, oh, mate. What do you do? What do you do? I know I know they've had uh, a lot of rivalry there. I know there's money to be made in pay-per-view and, and whatnot. And I think, like, DDP wants that fight as well, and he's the champ, so you, you obviously get a lot of say when when you're the one in the, the position of power. Mm-hmm. Were you surprised that DDP turned down 300? Um, no, I didn't really pay attention to it because you don't know what – when, when I'm reading things, you don't know what's real. Yeah. Right? You don't know the – what's behind it, the real story. They're just kind of bites, if you would. Um, yeah, and like, but like I said, he's, he's in the position of power. He's the one sitting on the throne, so he can, he can kind of call the shots. So the ideal scenario is you fight in August against a Sean Strickland type, win that fight, get a title shot. That would be picture perfect. Okay. Um, I, I want to let you run because I feel bad for your wife. I hear the children. I know it's a hectic time. You've given us too much <laughs> of your time. No, it's all good. I know exactly what that is like. There's nothing more stressful than that morning uh, That morning rush. Uh, appreciate you joining us as always. Again, congrats on the win. I'm happy you're feeling better now. And, uh, yeah, I think it's about time you fight back home. Uh, you've been traveling a lot for these fights. So I think uh, a Robert Whitaker fight in Sydney would be incredible. And I am sure the crowd over there would agree. So well done, Rob. Thank you for joining us again. Appreciate it. And uh, good luck with the kids now in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Thank you for having me, mate. All right. There he is, Robert Whitaker. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.